we're going to finish reviewing. So we're starting at number four, reviewing some basics and tricks. So we're on the back side of this worksheet working on simplifying square roots. So number 24, the square root of 50. Okay, what's the process? We do a factor tree. So 2 times 25, and then 25 breaks down to 5 times 5. We have a pair, so the pair comes out, and we have 5 square root 2. So that's the square root of 50. Okay, let's look at this next one. The next one's a little tricky. You actually have two ways you can do it. You can reduce this and then simplify, or you can simplify and reduce. But notice both of these are perfect squares. 4 is a perfect square and 64 is a perfect square. So I would tend to try to just split that square root, like a square root on the top, a square root on the bottom, and then just simplify each one of those. Because we know the square root of 4 is 2, and we know the square root of 64 is 8. So we have two eighths, and that just reduces to 1 fourth. So there you go. So that one, you can do that way, or you can reduce it first and then simplify that square root. Okay, let's look at 26. 26, square root of 32, or 3 times the square root of 32. So let's go up here, and I'm just going to use this space up here to break down the 32. I'm just going to leave the 3 outside. I don't need to use it for now, because I'm just going to multiply whatever I simplify here by 3. So let's take this and break it down to 2 times 16. And then 16 is a perfect square, 4 times 4. So we have 2 times 4 times 4. And since 4 does break down, but once you find a pair, you can stop. So let's take out a square root of uh, 16, which is 4. When we take that out, we're going to multiply it by the 3 that's already there. So 4 times 3 gives us a 12 on the outside. And then we have a square, a 2 that's all by itself, so it stays in. So that's going to simplify to 12 square root 2. So that goes with number 26. Okay, now let's look at 27. 27, we have to use conjugates. We have a square root in the denominator, and you can't leave a square root in the denominator. So typically, you would just multiply by the square root of 5. But we've got 3 minus the square root of 5, so we have to multiply by its conjugate which is 3 plus the square root of 5. Okay, once we multiply the bottom by that, we have to multiply the top by that. So the top we're just going to distribute. So you're going to distribute 7 times 3 and 7 times the square root of 5. So you get 21 plus 7 square root 5. Okay, now the bottom is a little bit different, the denominator. We have to FOIL this. So we're going to do first, outer, inner and last. So let's see, 3 times 3, that's 9. Outer is 3 times positive square root 5, so positive 3 square root 5. On the inside we get negative 3 square root 5. And then the last one for the FOIL is negative times a positive, which is a negative square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is square root of 25, because the rule is inside times inside. Okay, now let's clean this up. Notice what happens here. Our two middle terms disappear, and then that square root simplifies to a nice whole number. So the square root of 25 is just 5. So we're going to have 9 minus 5, so we end up with 4 in the denominator, which is beautiful because we no longer have a radical. So that's the purpose of multiplying by a conjugate. So the final answer is 24, or 21, plus 7 square root 5 all over 4. Some teachers like to split it and write it as 21 fourths plus 7 square root 5 all over 4. You can write it like that too. Both answers are perfectly acceptable um, and just you need to be aware of that so you recognize the answer in both forms. Okay, so let's look at number 28.